coach, Ryan Hennessy, NBC 13 in Birmingham. Just overall, going through a few days of camp, what's your evaluation so far? I saw some positives, some negatives. You kind of say you got to have some more throws. You, you kind of missed some of the throws. What is your overall evaluation? You nailed it. Yeah, just about that. I mean, it's solid for everybody. I thought today we had the most urgency of all the practices we've had so far, and that's just getting from the sideline onto the field, guys transitioning. Uh, our conditioning happens in practice. And I thought we did the split practices that got a few guys. That was hard on them. And we came together. Uh, we had another hard practice. I thought guys felt that. We had a day off yesterday. And so I, we felt that today in a good way. They came out, I thought the energy was good. The focus was good. The urgency of just getting from drill to drill, on the field, off the field, was what it should look like today. So that was better. Uh, as far as meetings and just our understanding of what we're trying to do, I think the guys are studying, they're preparing, but we still just, we got a ways to go in that area. Um, and I, the coaches are doing a good job of teaching them. I think more guys are trying to understand better what we're doing. I think they're bringing some other guys along. We just need more guys to do that. But overall, today was a good day. And I'd say solid to answer your question where we are. John Conley, ABC 34 in Birmingham. Just your evaluation of the secondary through the first two days of camp. I think those guys have done really well. Two, two groups right now, the wide receivers and the DBs, the execution, we're going to still continue to improve in those areas. But those guys run quite a bit of practice, and there's been zero complaints for many of those guys. They just go out there, they work. Uh, I think the secondary, um, you know, Keontae Scott, it's been a nice addition to have him, and he showed up and made an immediate impact out there at practice. And I think the rest of the guys uh, in that back end, some of the new guys we brought in, and, and uh, other guys like Pritchett, uh, guys that have been there, Simpson, have been around. I and mean, those guys are just, they've elevated their game from what I've seen, um, and at least their training habits from what I've seen so far. We'll find out the consistency, because that's what you really look for in that group through camp. But overall, I've been, been pleased with the secondary. I like where the receivers are as far as just the work. Uh, we got a ways to go. We got to catch the ball. You guys saw that today. We got to catch the ball better. Um, but as far as the work goes and just the effort, because they run so much, I think those two groups have done a good job. Ryan, uh, Jason Cowell, Auburn 247. Young receivers, Camden Brown, Mark Kelly, that, that weren't here in the spring. What have you seen out of those guys early on? Yeah, Camden's a big guy. You know, he brings that size. And so he's, he can go up and get the ball. He's got a lot of range. Um, I thought he didn't have some of the catches that he'd made uh, in the previous practices today. And so uh, just consistency for many of those receivers, but from our young guys in particular. But he's a big target. I think he's starting to understand what we're doing. Omari catches the ball really well. I think he's, he's been pretty consistent with his hands. He's getting better, a better understanding of what his role is and where we can utilize him and just the offense in general. So both those guys, and Jay Fair too. I mean, Jay's another guy. I think Jay... <laughs> Barr, Dawson, all those guys are kind of in that same position there. They're all competing, and they're all in their own ways doing some really good things. I thought Jay did some good things today that stood out. Uh, Dawson did some things the other day. Barr's been doing them throughout camp. You know, he's just he's got a good knack for getting himself open. So um, besides um, Landon, you know, Camden is, is the other guy that really has got some size out there that, that we can do some things with, and they've both shown that throughout. Now – you know, the consistency from those big guys, you know, that's going to help us if we can get that. With Barr Dawson, uh, Eric has said that a couple times that he's one of the most improved players on the offense as a whole. What, what have you sort of seen improvement to year one, from year one to year two? Is it understanding of the route tree or, or what sort of is sort of clicking for him? You're talking about Dawson? Yeah. Yeah, I think just maturity. I mean, he, he showed flash. So he can run. Well, I'd say a couple things. One is maturity and just – settling into, all right, you're in the SEC and you want to play, here's the things you have to do. And that goes from meetings to everything. So I think maturity. And then really for him, kind of just uh, technique and running. He can run, but he was kind of all over the place when he first got here. And that was what made him a little bit slippery. And he still got some of that to him, but just how to get himself open, how to run, how to turn it on and really run straight and go track down a ball. He's not the biggest receiver, so you gotta have a lot of range in your speed. You gotta be able to catch up to balls because you don't have that length to go get it. And I think he's, he's done a much better job of that. But he's come along, maturity. I think guys like Shed, Malcolm, some guys that have been around have kind of helped 
him. Bars helped him as well. So bringing some other guys in too, Dezalin and guys that have kind of played, um, even though they transferred in, guys that have played and, and been around, I think have helped him too. Bill Cameron of uh, ESPN 106.7. With uh, <clears throat> going, going into pads and scrimmage coming up Saturday, uh, how quickly can you start determining, not depth chart, but I mean, who can, you know, who can help you this fall? Yeah, we've been doing it every day. And nothing that's solidified, but just the coaches in there every day. All right, if we had to play today, and we're just kind of moving guys around and based off performance. So we'll find out after the scrimmage where we are. And really, this week is going to determine how much work we do in the scrimmage, you know, what that's going to look like. Um, so I got to see from these guys what we saw today. I thought the effort, the urgency, like I mentioned, those were what they needed to be. That needs to continue so we can go have a really good scrimmage. And then we want to be very specific on what we want to get out of that because we're still a ways away from playing. Right, as we get closer, that live work and then really getting dialed into tackling and breaking tackles, that's what you want to make sure that you're focused on. But, you know, we're doing it every day. I mean, we're kind of shuffling guys around and, you know, we've told our guys that all eyes are on them. I mean, everybody's watching what's going on out there and it's, it's body language, it's, it's what you do on the field, uh, the things you do in the, in the building. Um, so really everything is taken into account. And, you know, right now it's, um, Feel like we're like too deep where we'd be at right now if we had to play. I mean, some of the guys that have played, some of those young guys that have, that have stood out, uh, are starting to work their way in. And you know, as we get to the scrimmage, we'll find out more when we get to go live. Who's going to hit? Who's going to tackle? And who's going to play? And then, then we're going to move it from there, and we'll jockey that around that second scrimmage. Into that second scrimmage will really be when you're cutting the, the team into the two deep and the scouts is what that's going to look like. So it's going to happen fairly quickly. And like I told our guys, I mean, this stuff goes quick and you need to be ready. So every rep you get, uh, every practice matters. And Ryan, Mark uh, Murphy from Inside Auto Advisors, <clears throat> 247 Sports. How does Zach look now that he's out there? Has he got any rust? And just the quarterbacks in general, how are they doing? Yeah, I don't know if he's got any rust. I mean, again, it's, it's camp. And so you're seeing a lot of different looks from the defense. Uh, I think all the quarterbacks have had their moments really good and some were. You know, we got to learn from it. Um, I think he's done well. Like today was a good day for him. I thought he his footwork was good, threw the ball well. Uh, like everybody else, he had a sense of urgency on the field, and you know that's that's where you know our quarterbacks really each and every day they got to they got to show up and have great days because if they don't, the rest of us really feel that. You know, so there are really no days off for those quarterbacks. And I think today was one of our more consistent days from the QB. Still not what it needs to be, but it was still more consistent than, than what it's been from all those guys. And, you know, even Holden. Holden's starting to really show some flashes of, of understanding what we're doing, um, changing a few things mechanically, so he's just a little bit better in those areas. But all those guys, I think, have done a really good job of, of applying what Coach Keesaw has asked him to do. Now we just, we got more time. That's the thing. It's not a finished product right now. And that's for everybody, we all want to know, and myself included, but coaching that position, doing this for a few years now, you know that we have time to keep building through some things. And you just got to stick with one thing for a while until they get it and then move on to the next because you don't want to throw five or six things at a quarterback because um, they're not really mastering anything. You got to master something. You know, you got to figure out what that is. Um, you got to master it and then you got to move on to the next thing. Brian, uh, Brian Matthews, AuburnSports.com. I want to ask you about Andres Carlson. Is he fully back from his knee injury? And how does he look through the first few days of camp? Yeah, he looks like it. Uh, he, today we had kickoff. Uh, he was wearing his brace today out there on the kickoff. I still think he hadn't completely, you know, just put everything into a swing, but he put it in the end zone. You know, that's the thing. I mean, he's just, he's got the leg. So he's, a, he's an elite talent that way, but he's, the thing about Anders that I like, mean, Anders is mature. Anders understands there's a progression to all this. And by the time he's ready to, we got to go play, he'll be ready. He's ready right now, but for his level, right? He can go out there and, and be as good as most kickers in the country right now. His level and where he's trying to put himself, there's a progression to get there. And I think um, Evan McGuire, you know, continues to, to improve. Uh, and kickoff and, and things like that. And then uh, Alex McPherson is, has been pretty good. You know, Alex is, is not as big as Anders. You can see that, but he packs a punch now when you watch him kick. And he's got some torque, and that guy can boom it. So he's, he's also a special talent. So both those guys, I think, are pushing each other. And that specialist group, you guys have seen the TVs. They've been on the TVs a few times. 
Um, so they're pretty proud of themselves. All right. When I called them out today, there was they sit in that back corner right there, and there was a big cheering section for themselves. Um, but they're doing. They're, they really are. Anders, um, Oscar, all those guys. They're doing some really good things. So our specialists are in a good spot right now. I think just decision making. That's the one thing. You know, that's for Robbie. He's he's um he's a weapon too when he takes off and runs. That's one thing you guys probably have seen him uh, do that. So he's got that ability, and he's he's a force when he does it. So just decision making, right? If everybody's covered, and he's going to have a chance to go out there and make a play with his feet. But I also think he's throwing the ball better. His decision making in the pass game. Um, I thought he had a couple throws the other day that were really special. That he put in some windows and with some accuracy, and then just uh, his command of the offense too, calling plays, making checks, um, audibles, all those things. He's got a better feel for those things right now, uh, and that's why he was able to to be the player. And today was pretty good. You know, I thought TJ had a good day today. Zach, you know, stepped up in some areas. All those guys did some good things. But um, and I think every one of those quarterbacks have been player of the day at some point. So just. You know, those guys are, are still competing. They're all getting you know, somewhat equal reps, and I like where Robbie's progressing right now. Dan, back to ESPN 167. You mentioned the execution of the wide receivers. How much of that do you attribute to Coach Hilliard, and is there any receiver in particular that has impressed you the last couple of days? Yeah, I think I, Coach Hilliard, I, I would absolutely um, tell you that he's made an impact in that room. No doubt about it. Those guys, like I said, um, I really haven't, other than just those guys out there working, um, and which is a, which is a really positive thing. There's been very little distraction, you know, and, that, and that's a large group. You, you have large numbers, at the wide receiver position, um, but they're just going. And I think that's because of his leadership in the meeting room and all that. He has an expectation of this is how we're going to do it. And those guys are doing it. Can we do it better? Absolutely. Does he work with them after practice? Yep. He's going to spend time with them, and he'll come in meetings, and he'll tell them exactly what they need to do. And a guy like Zay Capers today, um, Zay, is, <coughs> Zay has gotten better and better every single day. So I think he's one of the guys that stood out. I thought today he did for sure. We threw one. He was running a deep post. The ball was thrown over his right shoulder. He's running that way. It's thrown over his right shoulder. He current turns and adjusts, catches the ball for a touchdown. I mean, that's you don't see many guys do that. And I think. For a guy like that, he's one of the guys that really stood out and has stood out, you know, through this camp. And I think he's a guy that, uh, because of Coach Hilliard, has really taken the next step. Because he's a he's another guy too. He's a big, long target, and he's making a lot of plays for us right now. So I should have mentioned him earlier, but he's he had some good things uh, through these practices that we've seen, and he continues to do that. So those guys are, yeah, definitely he's made an impact with the, that group. How excited are you and your team both that you get to start the first month plus of the season at home and kind of establish your identity as a team in front of your home fans? Yeah, I think that's, you know, it's a unique. Somebody else had five games this year. Who was it? I saw it. Is there some other team that has five games? You guys should know that. <laughs> All right. Well, look it up. I could be wrong. But there, was another, there was another team that had, uh, I think, five home games as well. It's, I've never been in a situation like that, but – you know, we're going to try to take advantage of it and to be at home. And, you know, look, we know our routine, right? That's one of the things. And I also think for our guys, too, is that needs to be our advantage. It can't be one of those things where you get bored with it, right? Uh, you want to go on the road. I think sometimes that, that breaks things up a little bit because you've been at home. You've been practicing. Sometimes it's good to get on the road. We have five straight home games. And in our stadium, that should be our advantage. So we, we have talked about that since January of what that schedule is going to look like just because it's unique. So as far as I'm concerned, yeah, I mean, I want to be, I want to be right there in our stadium playing at home. We've got eight home games, take advantage of it. We get to start that way. I mean, that's a, that's an advantage for us. Um, what have you seen uh, the, the defensive transfer and e-commerce mm -hmm. guys like Morris Joseph, uh, Bragg, yep. and, you know, Craig McDonald, what have, what have you seen out of those guys as they kind of get used to the system? Yeah, well, I would say this Morris, um, he was, he, was a guy that the first day I put out examples of practice habits and all that, he was on it. He was the very first guy I showed. So, you know, he's 
not as long as some of the other D linemen that we have, but he packs a punch now. That's the one thing about him. I mean, he's really athletic. He's got some suddenness to him. He's powerful. He's got natural leverage. You know, he's not as tall as the other guys. And he shows that um, Craig, I think, has done a good job. Craig was coming off a foot injury, so he's just kind of getting back into it. Uh, and so you're starting to see that. But it, he's, you know, I don't think there's anything negative. But now it's the conditioning and, and getting a chance to go out there and run and cut and, and really just kind of trust that ankle that he can do those things. Um, and then uh, Bragg, you know, the edge position, we know how important that is. You got Eku, you got Derek there, both those guys are good. Bragg's come in, he's working on special teams, he's in there playing. I think just his maturity and obviously, um, you know, this being his last year, you know, that's really stood out too. Like he's come in, he's figured it out. So he, he's made an impact already. He's got that other group to work with. So those three guys right there um, at that edge position, he's a huge addition to that. So we needed him and he's certainly come in here and, and made an impact. So I feel like those guys have all been been really good additions to our team. Brian, forgive me if uh, you've been asking for hope you're doing well, by the way. Back Thank you. Here. Yep, doing uh, well. <laughs> doing good. Um, where is, have you seen Donovan Coffin's growth the most over the last couple weeks? And just if you got to know. Yeah, Donovan, he's uh, very focused on and has been since January, just the day to day, like what he has to do to get better. And I think he came in with that mentality, but I think he's really kind of honed in on what his process is. And to me, he's, he's a guy that has become a leader on this team, really by example. And I think now verbally, because he knows what we're doing, he knows the calls. Uh, he's a guy that's gonna help us on special teams. So just all around good football player that in the summertime where I think he stood out in our decks, that last day of decks, I mean, he's pushing himself, he ran, I think maybe the best on that day. He's been at every every meeting locked in, every practice locked in, every walkthrough locked in. I mean, he's very purposeful in what he does. And to me, like that stands out because he gets an advantage because he's not wasting opportunities. So that needs, needs to continue. I mean, he can play for us. And I think for him, what he's worked on, he's worked on tackling, he's worked on coverage. He's worked on uh, just his skills on the defensive side of being able to move around and play safety and nickel in different spots because he understands the defense. So he's making himself more versatile uh, where we can utilize him in different packages or different areas on the field. And what does it mean to have a guy who you can maybe put it in DB position but also put it in one of the safety spots um, with your defensive yep. package? Yeah, he's versatile. He gives you that flexibility to do some different things, right? You can have him in one spot, nickel, you can put him at safety. You can bounce them around, and so again, just for defenses, you don't have one guy at one spot and just identifying who that is. They got to know where he's actually lined up and, and who's lined up where. So I think that helps the defense uh, with the offense trying to identify players and numbers and all that. He's not in the same position, you know, and might be in a different on a different call. He might be in a different position. So he gives us that versatility that that helps us on the defensive side. Brian, last week Eric. Shin and Tank all kind of separately said that one of the biggest differences they think in the offense is the creativity, kind of moving guys around, putting guys in position to succeed, particularly in the passing game. For you, how much of that was a focal point maybe this offseason? And what goes into that process for you when you're trying to look at guys and figure out, I guess, how to create mismatches on offense? Yeah, it's really not. I think that's what we do, really. Um, so I would say from the, the, the offensive philosophy, that's always been it. Uh, and we tried to do some of that last year. We didn't probably do it as much. Uh, I also think we know our personnel better. I think we also have some better personnel and like some more depth in areas, which, which allows us to be able to do those things. But it, you know, everybody, you want to train everybody to kind of do it all, so they know the positions. And really, just you're just training to be a good football player. That's what you're doing. So the off season, you're training guys to be good football players, because special teams, right? If you're an offensive player, you still have to tackle. So you're teaching guys still how to tackle. You're teaching guys how to block, all right, how to defeat blocks. And then you start getting into more specific when you get into schemes and going, okay, everybody runs a certain route this way. You kind of find the guys that do it best, all right, that might be the guy that's going to be on that play in that particular position. And then the players have to understand that too because you might be a guy that's, that's playing one spot, but on this play you're playing another. So you got to see the big picture of the offense. So you're trying to teach guys where it's not just you only do this, you need to know this, this whole thing. If you want to play and you want to be more versatile in our offense and give yourself a chance to be on more plays, you need to know the whole thing. So it's kind of that whole part whole concept. 
And that's more of a credit to our coaches and players is that they're starting to understand football, at least what we want them to do. All right, so our offense, what we're trying to get done, um, what the concept, uh, how it's going to beat the coverages or the, or the front, whatever it is. And so those guys could be more versatile. We can bounce them around. So we're just a you know, more smart team at this point than, than what we were. And I think the coaches right now are identifying, okay, who does what well? And then you start getting into more of the game planning and specifics of that. Brian, is it possible for the chip to get any bigger? You know, you guys didn't get named to preseason 25, not going back into this stuff in February, but just everything from all the way through to now, the end of the season, is it possible to get any bigger than what it's already been? Um, yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, that, that whole concept of the, the chip and all that, you kind of got it. Right, I think that's one thing. I really do. I mean, there's certain things that motivate you, and you can get upset about whatever. And um, I think it's really what we're trying to teach our guys is how to how to just be that way, regardless. Right. I think that's the whole idea of our football program is to how to teach people in our football program, coaches and players, how to be that way on a day-to-day -day basis. Is what it is. Right. How to go out there and really have that chip so to speak, on your shoulder every day. For whatever it is you're trying to do, whether you've made it, all right, you're at the bottom, it doesn't matter. What anybody says, or they, they're patting you on the back. I've been there in both positions. Everybody's loving you and telling you that you're all this and you're not. Everybody telling you that you're not, and that's not true either, right? Just try to be a consistent human being and focus on the things that you can control and then go out there and try to be the very best at it that you can be. So to me, that's all that stuff is, is really just the drama, all right, that surrounds, you know, what we do, but that's not what we talk about necessarily. We talk about what we have to do today, like what's on that, that board right there. Those are things that we talk about. Those are things that matter to us. Um, and that's the motivating factor, right? Because after the pregame speech and all the hype wears off in a game, like what's, what's driving you? Hopefully you want to be the very best you can be. You're going to be accountable to your team, those type of things. It's important to you. That's how you're wired uh, because that's that's really what you want from, from anybody that you're working with, all right, or what you're trying to share with these guys too. That's what you want from these guys. That's what you want from yourself too. So um, that's not a focus for us. I mean, in these walls, what we're trying to do on a day-to-day -day basis, how we develop our players, how they improve, um, giving them a chance to go live their goals and dreams, and making sure that they're doing things the right way, best of our ability, that stuff is what matters. Brian, Brian Justin Hogenson from Auburn Live on three. Last year, you talked a lot about offensive line <coughs> rotating a lot in fall camp, just trying to shuffle those guys. Is that still happening a lot, or are guys a little bit more settled in their positions, or is it still just a rotation of learning every spot like it was last fall? Is it different? Uh, it's different. It's not as much of a rotation. You're trying to get, you know, your tackles are your tackles, your guards, your guards. You know, so not everybody's bouncing around all over the place. It's really now it's off of who's available, right? If the guy's not in, then you're going to have to adjust and play some guys and bounce them around a little bit. So, and like any position, you know, that that's one of the things about camp. Like, you've got to be able to get through camp. All right, that's one of the things I think is really important in, in, uh, in football. And when you don't, you hurt your team. All right, you obviously hurt yourself. You take your reps away, but you also hurt your team, and you got to start now making the coaches bounce guys around and do all that. So we're not trying to do that. Some of it happens because some guys can't, can't practice uh, for whatever reason. But um, we'd like to have everybody right now available. We're not that far into practice, so, I mean, guys, guys should be able to be out there. And... When they're not, then we got to bounce some guys around, which that happens. It'll happen through the season. I think sometimes um, it's good to do that, but you'd like to have that core working together and having the right spots uh, more now than what we did when we first got here. Because we were still trying to figure out who they are. We got a better idea of who they are. Yeah. Now we want to spend more time with them in the right position. Take one more. Brian, who, whose idea was that Top Gun quarterback video? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We had a couple hours on our hands right there <laughs> to do that. Uh, we were going to embrace the, everybody talks about the QB competition, right? So we embraced it a little bit. Guys did a good job and uh, just having a little bit of fun and kind of going to the camp. I think that's one thing that we lose too is just this, this season, 
uh, that we're about to play in. Uh, there's a lot that goes into it. There's a lot of training, and you know, for those guys and, and our, our players in, in particular, just having a little bit of fun. All right, was kind of the whole concept behind that. So, and uh, and we enjoyed doing it, and they had some fun with it. They got to see the actual scene, so they saw that. I'm not sure how we performed it. I write to a T, but also just kind of just being with those guys too, like uh, the coaches and the quarterbacks, and have a chance to be together right before we're going to go out there and and get into this storm. Um, was part of the idea behind that. Ohio State plays five straight games too. Q&R. What's that? There you go, right? I knew there was another Looked one. Up, I didn't know yep, that. I knew there was another one <laughs> in there as well. All right, good. All right, thanks guys. Have a great day. Hey,